This episode of One Punch Man featured a cyborg fighting against a ninja. And if that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what to tell you. The superhero shenanigans and the epic action continues in another awesome episode of One Punch Man. Going forward into my reviews of the second season of One Punch Man, I'm going to do everything in my power to not compare it to the very first season. We already know that this season has a different animation team and a different director, and we could already tell from the very first episode of the second season that things were going to be different this time around. That being said, I still think that JC Staff is doing a pretty good job with the season. In fact, I would go as far as to say that they probably should have opened the season with this episode right here. Not only was it filled to the brim with some amazing action, multiple battles like Genos vs. Sonic, Saitama vs. Hellish Blizzard, and even the introduction of Garo, the student of the Silver Fang Bang himself. This episode was really solid, and honestly had a lot of moments which left me at the edge of my seat and got me so damned excited. So let's just go ahead and talk about some of the best parts of this episode. The first half is sort of an introduction to the character of Garo, who is not going to be a hero for the series, he's actually going to be a villain. He's a hero who's turned into a bad guy, and he's completely obsessed with monsters. I'm not sure why, maybe it has something to do with his weird Wolverine-esque haircut. The point is, the guy just really wants to fuck people up, and the good opportunity he has in this episode, he's not gonna let that go, as he gets to single-handedly take out three heroes at once. Magic Man, Heavy Tank Loincloth, and Blue Fire. And my god, does he make fools of these guys. One, he just chokes out Magic Man. Two, he completely breaks Heavy Tank Loincloth's arm in multiple places, and Blue Fire? Well, Blue Fire just gets his fucking hand ripped off! Aside from Gara's motivation to simply be like a monster and fight heroes just for the fun of it, I'm not sure what his ultimate motivation is going to be, but it certainly makes for a pretty entertaining character, and I can't wait to see what sort of heroes he's going to cross paths with. It's only a matter of time before he runs into Saitama or Genos, and I can't wait to see that happen, because if he runs into Saitama, well, he's probably going to be put in his place. If he runs into Genos, we're probably going to have an epic battle on our hands. The rest of the episode follows up on the scene from the end of the last episode, where it looks like Fubuki, otherwise known as Hellish Blizzard, and Soundo Speed Sonic are going to be going after Saitama. They both have their reasons for doing so. Sonic, because he has a massive chip on his shoulder, and his pride has been completely crushed by the bald cape-wearing hero. He really wants to knock him down a peg or two, but it's probably going to take a long time before he could even get close to even laying a scratch on this guy. And when he actually arrives at Saitama's apartment, he's actually met by Genos, and suddenly an epic battle ensues. Unfortunately, we don't get to see a lot of it, but what we do get to see looks freaking incredible. And while they're fighting, we also get to see that Fubuki is also going to meet Saitama as well, but her motivations are a little different. She's never actually met Saitama before, and she's only interested in him because of her weird obsession with with the rank of a hero. That's what's most interesting about this episode. Not so much the action, which, like I said, I think is honestly pretty solid, but really it's seeing how these two heroes have a completely different ideology on what it means to be a hero and how they actually consider their rank in the Hero Association. This may not come as a surprise, but Fubuki, the hellish blizzard, is actually the sister of Tatsumaki, one of the absolute strongest heroes in the series. And interestingly enough, she's actually the younger sister. Just looking at her being a little taller and more womanly, you would expect her to be the older one, but no, she's actually the younger one. And what's also very interesting is that she's not as strong as her sister. In fact, she seems to have something of an inferiority complex when compared to her sister. Her sister is the one who gets all of the attention, is the one that's really strong, and there's no way that Fubuki is ever going to simply be able to catch up with her. While she is a psychic, her abilities just completely pale in comparison to her sister. That's not to say that Fubuki Fubuki's not strong. She can actually cause a lot of damage and can even create giant psychic powered tornadoes as well, just not on the grand scale just like her sister. But what's interesting about Fubuki, of course, is that she's obsessed with her rank. She is the number one B-ranked hero, but she actually knows her place in this world, knowing that apparently there's no way that she can even make it to an A rank, but she's going to do everything in her power to keep the rank that she has, and she's going to make sure that everyone else stays below below that, or 
or doesn't go past her at all. And considering that Saitama is slowly making his way up the ranks, this is something that actually kind of frightens her. So she gives Saitama two prospects. Join my group and be my underling, or you're gonna have to die. So a big battle ensues where she uses all of her crazy psychic power and shows off her very curvaceous figure, and predictably, nothing works against Saitama. Before their battle can even get started, it's immediately interrupted by Genos and Sonic fighting, which is led by a massive explosion and finally seeing the two characters go one-on-one -on -one with each other. And this entire scene is very impressive. I especially love the animation on Genos' arms when they actually transform and go through all these crazy forms. I love when he punches at Sonic, which causes a tremendous amount of destruction right next to Saitama's apartment. And I really loved the moment where Genos actually ends up ripping out Sonic's top knot, which you can only imagine probably just pissed him off in ways you cannot possibly imagine. But Saitama decides to stop him, knowing that if he continues, he's not going to have an apartment to go back to. So he decides to humor Sonic and gets into a fight with him. Basically, all that really ends up happening is that Sonic decides he's going to bring out a secret technique that he's been working on, which basically amounts to him creating a lot of clones and moving really fast, and Saitama mockingly kind of does the same thing by rapidly moving back and forth, and inadvertently just takes him out by just sort of bumping into him. And this is when Sonic realizes, yeah, he still doesn't stand a chance against Saitama. The main purpose of this scene, aside from blowing our minds away with the amazing action and the hilarious comedy, is that Fubuki gets to realize that Ren Rank ultimately means nothing in this world. Saitama is incredibly powerful, but one of his underlings is an S-rank hero. Essentially, her ideology clashes with Saitama. Saitama realizes that if you have powers, you should just simply use them for good no matter what. It doesn't matter what rank you are. Just use your powers to save the world. Fubuki is sort of blown away by all of this, and it even seems like she wants to sort of join his posse and group, which I think would honestly be really good because there are not a lot of female characters in this series. This is a fucking sausage fest, you know what I'm saying? So what's the rundown on this episode of One Punch Man? What a fantastic episode. This was another one of those episodes that sort of perfectly encapsulated everything that I love about the series, how ultimately at the end of the day, while One Punch Man is a really cool action show, it's also sort of a parody of shonen battle manga series, and this episode certainly played to that fact to a T, but it also did a really great job of actually teasing the character of Garo just a little bit more. I want to learn a lot more about this character, why he has such an obsession with monsters, why he wants to be a bad guy, and ultimately what his goal is going to be, whether it be something as petty as just wanting to be the strongest person in the world, or to have the aspirations of taking over the world itself, I'm really interested to see what's going down, especially now that his master, Silverfang, is going to be going after him, and that is hinted at in this episode, and boy, can I not wait to see the return of that badass martial arts master. But this episode ultimately also just gave us what we've all been wanting to see, a lot of really cool action, and Genos vs. Sonic, while it was short-lived, was really damned awesome. There were some really well-executed action scenes in this episode, which were done with a lot of gusto, some really cool movement, and a lot of things which truly emphasize the speed and power of all of these characters. I mean, that one scene where Genos just punches right at Sonic, and it creates like a massive shockwave, just exploding everything in his wake, that was really solid. Even Saitama is starting to notice that he is becoming stronger. But one of the biggest surprises of this episode had to come with the character of Fubuki, who initially I thought was going to come across as kind of a villain-esque character, but now she just seems like someone who's actually been sort of enamored with Saitama and might even start to see him as something more of a very friendly rival. Saitama has ultimately ended up changing another hero and their perspective on what it means to be a hero in this world, and again that speaks volume for his character despite the fact that he always looks brain dead and completely bored. The episode was also not devoid of humor as well, I really love the scene at the very end of the episode where we get a return visit from King, who goes to pick up one of his video games from Saitama, only to discover that his portable system has been completely crushed and his save file is gone. These are the things that King is going to have to worry about. Not fighting monsters anymore, but Saitama breaking all of his shit. So let's go ahead and put a bow on this review. This was a solid episode. High on the action, brand new characters, good characterization, lots of hype building, and it still manages to look pretty damn good while it's doing it. I cannot recommend checking out this series. If you love the first season, check this one out. There's definitely a lot of stuff to love. I'm giving the episode a 5 out of 5. You heard my thoughts on the episode. 
I want to hear yours. Tell me what you thought about it in the comments section below. What you thought about the battles in this episode. The battle between Genos and Sonic. What do you think of the character of Fubuki? Do you like her a little bit more than her sister Tatsumaki? Maybe vice versa? And what's the deal with Garo? What's his ultimate motive? What do you want to see from his character? Let's get a discussion going about this episode in the comments section below. Thank you all for watching this review. I'll see you all next time. And as always, stay down there, baby.